Hello and welcome to the Longevity Learning Lab. Today we're going to make a couple of welds using the Hobart Easy TIG 165i. We're going to work on some 11 gauge carbon steel. So hang out for a few minutes and let's see how it does. I checked the metal thickness with the cool gauge that comes with the machine. So I connected the air cooled TIG torch and connected the work lead using the work clamp to the table. I took the foot control and connected it to the front of the machine using the Cat5 cable connector. I also used the Smith regulator and hose and connected that to the rear of the machine and then finally using the electrical connector plugged it into the receptacle on the wall. So now let's take a moment to take a look at the face of the Easy TIG 165i by Hobart. So there's essentially three controls that the operator has the ability to adjust or modify. So the first one on the left hand side here is the on off toggle switch. So we turn it on for power and turn it off to turn the machine off. Okay. The next one in the center here is the amperage or material thickness knob that we can adjust. So on the outside here the orange ring corresponds to when the machine is on the DC setting and that's a material thickness selector. Okay, The next ring in which is this grayish or silver color here that's the band we read when the machine is on the AC setting for alternating current when we use it for aluminum and magnesium. So we select the thickness of the material right here. And then the white, the inner band gives us a general feel for how many amps we're operating at. So if we decide that we want to operate at 120 amps, we would just reach up and turn the knob to 120 amps. And then finally here, the third control on the side here on the right, it allows us to select DC if we're working with steel, stainless steel, chromoly, or many other materials. And if we want to weld aluminum or magnesium, we select the AC button and move it to the upper selection. So the setup was real easy. I turned the toggle switch to DC and then I dialed the amperage control to 1 8 material thickness. Then I went ahead and used my grinder to take off the top hot rolled layer off of the 1 8 material that we had. So I went ahead and ground it with a hard disk first and then came back with a flapper and put a smooth finish on the surface of it to try to make a good weld. So after we got the material cleaned up, I went ahead and clamped it down to our strong hand tools tabletop. The arc started up real clean and smooth as I slowly depressed the foot control. The arc seemed real stable and worked real well. I was using a 332nd 2% thoriated tungsten sharpened to a needle point. As I welded, it didn't appear as though the tip of the tungsten degraded much at all. So the arc was real good and the machine tapered off real clean. So it seemed like it put down a pretty good weld. So for the second pass, once again, the arc started up real clean when I depressed the foot control and as I moved down the joint, the arc seemed real stable and real consistent. As I made adjustments up or down on the foot control, it seemed to respond very well. If I did have one critical thing about the machine while I was using it for welding, was the foot control itself. The idea of using the Cat5 cable, that's a great tool and a great idea of using that. But the foot control itself, the mechanism seemed to be a little sensitive. When I get done with this third weld, as I start to pull the tungsten and the torch away from the weld, you're going to see one more arc when the tungsten's about an inch or an inch and a half away from the material itself. And that was just, I very just slightly just wiggled my foot on the foot control and it started that arc. So as I made some of these videos on this day, I had that repeatedly occur 
this kind of random arc that would happen if I just slightly wiggled my foot on the foot control. So thanks again for taking a few minutes out of your day to hang out with us and take a look at some of the features of the Hobart Easy Tig 165i. So if you like what you see, subscribe to our YouTube channel and check back here often to see more informative videos in the area of welding and fabrication. So thanks again and have a great day.